Star Trek 57, M23, take two. It's Scott Star Trek, episode 78, the original series, season 2, episode 26, Assignment, Earth. Captain Kirk, my name is Gary Seven. I am a human being from the 20th century. I was on my way... Humans of the 20th century do not go beaming around the galaxy, Mr. Seven. I've been living on another planet far more advanced. I was beaming to Earth when you intercepted me. The location of that planet? Which their existence kept secret. Even in your time, it will remain unknown. It's impossible to hide a whole planet. It's impossible for you, not for them. Captain Kirk, I am of this time period. You are not. You interfere with me, with what I have to do down there. And you'll change history. You'll destroy the Earth. And probably yourselves, too. If what he says is true, Captain, every second we delay him could be dangerous. And if he's lying... This is the most critical period in Earth's history. The planet I'm from wants to help Earth survive. What if it turns out you're an invading alien from the future? A most difficult decision, Captain. All right. Well, what we can do is we can just uh, we can start the process. Let's just go for it. We'll start the process of beginning the podcast. We're just going to go for it. We're just going to jump right in. Yeah, people are fans it, of uh, we're gonna use the light speed breakaway factor. jumping right in if you do a twitter poll and you have two options and one option is jump right in and the other option is dilly dally 100 percent of people are gonna pick jump right in. yeah yeah right that's what they want <laughs> that's what they want that's what the people, people want people can dilly dally on their own time exactly they don't need to hire us <laughs> we don't need to provide <laughs> the, dilly dally the dilly dally on their behalf we, we, we needn't be Fold proxy proxy dilly dalliers or dilly dally whackers, whatever the term is. I don't know what the uh, uh, dilly dally whacker might mean something else. Yeah, the, yeah. the, 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 the professional funny. term for uh-huh. that. But uh, all right. So since we're jumping right in, as usual, we're jumping straight into it. And this week we are going to be discussing the original series episode Assignment Earth. Assignment Earth. Uh, it's season two, episode twenty-six. Episode twenty-six. Uh, and the last of the season. The la- yeah, yeah, the last of the season. And they get canceled. Posi- yeah, they were canceled, and they were Man. expecting to be. So I think one thing that's interesting about this episode yeah. is uh, there's not a lot of sort of thematic elements or morals really that i mean maybe i missed it you guys let me know if i i don't think so. i miss it it was more just yeah, a, sort of a cracking not, a cracking story yeah and it was potentially oh, the, the last episode of star trek ever. and it, they were trying to it was they were trying to do a crazy spin-off with this right, very seven yeah. guy seven <laughs> possibly terry gar the whole background right. that i mean i like this episode i think it's a actually a pretty great episode uh in a lot of ways, but in, in all ways, frankly, I thought it was a pretty cool episode. But it's got this yeah, weird, cool. weird thing going on because of the the background to why, why this story even exists. Because mm-hmm. um, yeah. I guess Roddenberry wrote this as a pilot because yeah. he right. knew the writing was on the wall with Star Trek, right? Right. Or figured it. So was. he was like, "Let's have a guy with works with aliens and have this young hip and especially Hollywood's version of the counterculture." It's it's like yeah. let's uh, let's have a job that I can keep earning money at. Yeah. <laughs> <'Cause right>. he, <laughs> Yeah, nobody figured. went nobody wanted to to do it yeah and because like i mean if you think about it like this is the kind of show that might have worked like you know in the future from from the 1960s somewhere sometime after 1968 in like, the real future like not- <laughs> like, like like after like yeah like after star trek is like set in and like people right. actually like star trek and then you and, and are just into science fiction mm-hmm. on normal television mm-hmm. it's a very roddenberry story when you think about it in terms of uh the there's i mean whether he's a human or an alien either way there's this alien influence and it's seemingly benevolent at least insofar as we can tell in this story that seems to me is is kind of a a roddenberry style it thing pretty, yeah. an inversion of what the common thing at the time was which was alien invaders coming to come and get you whereas this was some fella who was being sent across space in order to help you out and it was kind of time copy right kind of he's like you know, as in time cops like it's sort of yeah. sort of space time sets now. the stage for future developments in star trek with the whole time cop kind of set up does a man in 20th century garb doing <laughs> but like okay but that's weird like so he's from the 20th century he just grew up on another planet planet because they took some humans and they put him on this planet you've never heard of or yeah. i have 
And you won't or hear about it in the future. You won't hear about it either. Yeah. And I've got, a, I've got a girlfriend in Canada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for real, I swear. That's why you don't yeah, ever right. meet her. <laughs> she lives in British Columbia. <laughs> Actually, it's Alberta. She lives oh, in Alberta. my bad. Yeah. Not Saskatoon. <laughs> Is it Edmonton? Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. The uh, yeah. The, so the the Gary Seven thing uh, is a it's a intriguing concept. A rot, it's a very Roddenberry concept and a very sixties concept. I'd say this mm-hmm. sort of rugged, mm-hmm. sexy guy. Yeah, right. Coming through time. Okay. He's got a funny little gadget. He's got his funny gadget. He, Doctor Who. Asked. He's got his funny. It was cat. very Doctor Who. Yeah. It was like Meh, maybe this was like this was sort of like two Doctor Who to work as a TV show. At yeah, the time. it was Meh, the yeah. servo and the cat, of course, Isis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It. I. I guess why I keep coming back to the whole production background is that if you just look at this as a Star Trek episode, it's somewhat peculiar because first mm-hmm. of all, there's the the whole episode takes place in the '60s. They start in the 60s, they end in the 60s. <laughs> Captain Kirk is all like talking about time travel like it's just some shit they do. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why he has yeah, all those the be- time The beginning's violations. hilarious. It's like we've traveled back in time to the 20th century to yeah. the year. Kirk's got all them time violations. It's like, oh shit, you did what? Yeah. And he's, it's so matter of fact, he's like, oh, it's just a historical mission. We're just checking uh, shit out. Uh, high speed, yeah, light we're, speed we're being historians. Yeah, which they then, of course, apply this technique to uh, uh, in Star Trek IV, mm, uh, right? In order to travel back. Because apparently they're just really good at it. Like, yeah, they're just yeah, they're, yeah right. Nineteen sixty-eight, nineteen eighty, whatever the fuck. Like, what was that supposed to be? Eighty-six, eighty-four. Uh, Eighty-six, I believe. Yeah. As a Star Trek episode, it is peculiar, right? It's it's a it's a bit of an odd bird. It's not a straight up comedic episode. It's mostly a Gary Seven episode. Exactly. It's a Gary Seven episode <laughs> yeah, totally. with, with Captain Kirk bookends here and there. Um, you get to see Captain Kirk and Spock wearing those crazy trench coats. And the hat. Walking around oh, with various hats. Dude, the hat. Quote unquote Manhattan. The first hat. They change outfits yeah, when they're in New York and then yes. in Florida. They're the lighter yeah. outfits. They, yeah, this, they got like a Florida outfit. The, yeah. yeah, he's got like uh, the Spock's Florida no, it's sort of like the, Panama the, uh, hat. Uh, Spock has a fishing hat and I kept laughing yeah, out like loud at that. Yeah. Every time I saw him wearing that weird like fishing hat. Made it over the top yeah it was like he was looking like gilligan he's just but he's got that spock like face he's yeah. making all the time he's just like out from underneath it's crazy. Gilligan. <laughs> but so you've got you've got this story and it when you when you understand that it was originally its own story and then roddenberry it didn't and the networks weren't interested in it so roddenberry then wrote it into a star trek episode as sort of a backdoor pilot um which unfortunately also didn't end up going anywhere right um uh, then the story makes a lot more sense, and I actually find it more enjoyable to understand that because it helps smooth over a few of the little rough edges there, where the the some of the directing style. This is directed by I think Mark Mark Daniels or something, a guy, mm-hmm. a fellow who's directed tons of TOS. But um, it's it felt very I Dream of Genie esque in some of the camera angles and yeah. just sort of the style well, of the humor was is, like whimsical. That's the Manhattan apartment is where I guess like. The Lucy show is supposed to take place. Yeah, at least the same little, like, the same street at least. Eggs. You find uh, out Man from Uncle. What was yeah. it? East 68th Street or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's East 68th oh, Street. Oh, snap. Swanky part of town. So, like, when that came on in the 60s, people were actually getting all the, those references. Presumably, yeah. Presumably. Presumably. Mm-hmm. If and you it, watched and a ton of TV. Of course, TOS yeah, was yeah, produced yeah. by uh, Desi Lou. If you weren't in Vietnam. L- uh, uh, L- Lucille yeah, right. Ball is the reason <laughs> why Star Trek exists, basically. She was right, just, it's Lucy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was all her. So oh, yeah, that's right. A bit of a call out. Um, yeah, that's why they were doing that as kind of an homage. Although the show did not end up becoming a, its own show, like the spinoff didn't end up happening, I did hear from a fellow on Twitter, at PGTips85... <laughs> I don't know what that means, but that's 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 a brand of tea. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh. it's like one of the biggest brands of tea. In, Perhaps in this the fellow's UK, from uh, from England, but he was very <laughs> right. he was very he was very nice because we had posted you know a, a social media message at it's got Star Trek, uh, indicating that we'd be watching Assignment Earth, and uh, he he said this is one of my favorite episodes, and he's read the accompanying comics and books. So I asked him about those because I wasn't fully aware of that stuff, and he said that the Assignment Eternity is really good. And he also noted that the, there's a whole bunch of eugenic wars novels that incorporate right. Gary Seven into that storyline, as well as I think Roberta and Isis. I think are all yeah, involved yeah, in that no, stuff they're too. in it. I guess, and it, it talks all about them and Khan. And... Did you know there were some weird coincidences associated with this show? I mean, not yes. that. I mean, not that weird. Or are we talking about like the historic ones? Yeah. Or... What you want to yeah. you want to go for, it, Jimmy? Oh well, I found it interesting how it was aired, and then for like. It's toxic. It's an important assassination. Yeah. Happens and 
four days later, Martin Luther King Jr. Right. is assassinated. Yeah. Yep, just a few days later. And on the same day, on the same day, Apollo 6 was launched. Right. At the and same that, day as the assassination. Mistake. And that veered off, of course. Now, the, you know, the rest yeah. of it. You know, they, but they used they used Apollo four. That was yes. Apollo four. Yeah, because yeah. I think at the time Apollo four was the only one that had launched. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So, or at least that they had access to. That was, right. the, that was the only NASA man. gave him all that footage from well, the Saturn five. Uh, <laughs> I will say that this was a uh, I, I don't know what you call it um, uh, uh, stock footage palooza. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. Because it was not only stock footage of the of the rocket and you kind of kept seeing a lot of that. Like that um, you've seen like your entire did life. Did you get like a ton of Cape Canaveral? <laughs> and I the, mean, sorry, and, and like Ford, the, Mc, Ford New, McKinley. Uh, and also like the New York, like there's a bunch of New York stuff that was clearly just stock footage. Yeah. Um, mm. And, it, you know, it, never, it was, I don't know, it was odd because, you know, the stock footage never quite matched up exactly with the regular. I mean, I know that's, I, I'm not complaining about it. It's just kind of, it's funny because you didn't see so much of this in Star Trek before, uh, even in some other episodes where they went back in time. Of course, they had a little thing here or there. It's all sets. Yeah. They they, right. they relied more on sets and matte painting. They used the same old, like, urban set that they they tended yeah, they to did. use. At least yeah. that's what it seemed like. At Classic least, like, their clothes set. were cool when they went down. Yeah. People they, in the they 60s had some were, like killer threads. Yeah, man. man. I love Spock's hats. But Gary Seven was the sharpest. Yeah, he was. Yeah, a, he, he was, was a totally sexy, sharp. He was a yeah. sharp, sexy, was rugged cool. man. Terry Gar had a crazy ass outfit on. Oh, too, dude! But weird yeah. tights like, with the with lines. Something is like, but at the time, all that kind of psychedelic mm-hmm. her dress was pretty commonplace. Yeah, actually, yeah, crazy colors like, and you know that was the colors. It wasn't as psychedelic like out there as like they want you to think. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Terry Gar, of course, she played Roberta Lincoln. Uh, people know her from MASH. She was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. She was in that movie, Oh God! Exclamation point. Um, I have not, but I have it on my DVD. She's in Tootsie. Uh, she was in Batman Beyond as a voice. She was in one episode of King of the Hill, uh, Bill of Sales. I think she played Peggy's, like, the, the person in the in the scam above okay. Peggy. She was in uh, Young, Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein yeah. She was on Friends, was Phoebe's mom. Well, and Robert Lansing played Gary Seven. And right. he's a he's a fellow who's I don't know if people will be familiar with him, but he was on a lot of stuff back in the back in the day, like Twelve O'clock High and Daniel Boone. Oh yeah, he was on right. Branded, The Virginian, Branded, Mod oh, right, Squad, the uh, Mod Squad, uh, Bonanza. He did a couple episodes, Simon and Simon. I think The Equalizer oh. was one of the more like the later things that he did was mm. you know, a little bit more familiar. He, you also might know him from Under the Yum Yum Tree. <laughs> I read that he was in that movie. Who's in that? Jack Lemmon. I can't remember somebody like that. I just the 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 no, title con- confused and delighted me the title. Yeah. So, so I just figured why not? I'll go for it. Somebody set us straight on that one. Yeah. You know Spock really digs that cat. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was funny. He was I like that's dude. where the meme comes from. I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah. man, there's the meme right there." And he's just and he's just stroking that cat. Does he's he know it can that cat. change form into a a female woman type? Yeah, I was wondering about like <laughs> if he, had, if he had some sixth sense and Spock thought he was getting away with something or Right, or, right. He was or, like, "I'm Quite enjoying my Spock knows what's up. This is a lovely creature. That guy knows. Yeah, what's right. <laughs> yeah, you know we're beating around the bush a little bit, but Gary Seven and shows up because I guess he's being beamed to Earth from far away. He won't tell us where. The planet. And somehow that gets interrupted by the Enterprise. Mm-hmm. It's a bit weird, but it works for the plot. And, he, didn't, he didn't expect him to be there, I guess. And I guess it's the first indicator that he's not like some piece of shit asshole is that when they capture him you know he does try to escape but he he doesn't like you know try to kill them immediately right or he puts them to sleep and yeah and then he and he ends like up getting a nap. but ultimately he ends up you know he gets yeah. captured and he gets put in the brig so he gets out you know he he they're captured and uh or he's captured and then he escapes from the from the nice guard and then uh you know manages to beam down and start his down business. to new york He's down in New York, in New Manhattan, da, 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 in New York. And then we we're introduced to, to Terry Gar's like character. Like, this is a shithole. Yeah, I know. He, he like he's like can't stand this place. He's like, thank <laughs> yeah, God I won't have to be here long. <laughs> which is so primitive. Which is obviously a joke to the idea that they wanted to make a whole TV show with him that, to mm-hmm. run for no, like it's, ten seasons. It's your assignment, dude. It's we want to do like seventy assignment. episodes a year. But uh, but yeah, we we then get our introduction to Terry Gar, and they play that Star Trek clown music. You know, mm. like, do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 
right? Yeah, and music was all goofy. It was super goofy, and it was it was a little bit confusing what they were trying to characterize her as because like half the time it was as as some sort of like bumbling buffoon. And, but, uh, but on the other hand, they're she like, she's known super as a, sm- as a comic. Right. She's super was, smart. The beta five was like, she possesses intelligence. Yes. I'm which, yeah, it was like Gary Seven's like, holy like, shit, a woman with intelligence? Yeah, right. <laughs> but this is the 60s. We can't do Ooh. that. This is the 19 and 60s. But it was like, uh, it was me and Hollywood's portrayal of uh, the counterculture was driving me nuts in this episode. It's always with funny. Yeah. Car. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's like, come on, guys. Like, It is a reminder that Star Trek is ultimately produced by, quote unquote, the man. The man, yeah. The exactly. suits. Right? This is all helping out the CIA. Roddenberry so. had really. Oh, yeah, which she's like, I'm the CIA. And she goes, groovy. Yeah, yeah groovy. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at his ID. His ID totally passes as groovy. She, she's you know, like, I yeah. want to help the government. Like, groovy. She, it lo- it's not a fake. It's, I want to help the totally CIA. Groovy. Right. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's not a bummer, man. Rod, Roddenberry had plenty of <laughs> what we would consider very, very interesting and progressive views. He came up with a lot of ideas. Some people have based their lives around some of the ideas that he's come up with in terms of you know peace and harmony and communication and all that. All that's correct. Mm, uh, uh, but you know he he was he was not a perfect gentleman by any means. No, he was and, an old guy, and he, and he was an old guy, and he was. Uh, particularly as the seasons went along, uh, more and more willing to compromise. I mean, he compromised right from the beginning. He wrote the cage, showed it to the network, and they were like, "Oh, this is too smart." Too for, cerebral. This is too. Yeah. I don't know. No, this is going to scare <laughs> people. This is, this is like 40, you've got forty a, years you, to, ahead of its. You've time. got a lady yeah, right. in charge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're going to go crazy at home. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> so, so, but they let him do another pilot, and so he made compromise. Now that got us Star Trek on the air, got us Captain Kirk and all that, you know, so, you know, whatever will be, will be in case of Ra and all that in, um, you know, the whatchamacallit episode we did the other we recently with the, the space hippies. Oh. oh, oh, yeah, yeah. With uh, Charles the way Napier. to Eden. Yeah, the way to Eden. Right. Yeah, the way, that's Napier. another example of. Yeah, we we brother. Enjoy, it's an enjoyable brother. episode because it's hey, so man, goofy. Do you play brother. Yeah, yeah. But it's insane that th- that's like what people think the like, hippies were, were doing. So there's more of that in this episode. But it's not as much of a problem. Again, I think partly because it's the, all this Gary Seven stuff. It's and it's mm-hmm. taking place in 1968, one of the most tumultuous years mm, in yes. in U.S. history. Though they wouldn't necessarily know that at this point because is aired in March, right? Uh, late March. Yeah. Um, there, there should have been more sirens in New York City at the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. More loud sounds. Yeah. And- but you know, they they mention that they talk about you know this is a crazy time in U.S. history and and that's why we're coming back and we're gonna we're and it was odd how I forget exactly how Kirk phrased it but it was something along the lines of we're gonna try we're trying to figure out how the fuck these people like didn't they kill themselves it yeah it's like oh, yeah right it was actually because we had something to do with it yeah and he was like oh we teamed up something. we teamed up with this uh, <laughs> with this uh, supervisor what, not one nine four I think it was yeah. what, supervisor one nine four. Gary Seven. And his funny Gary sidekick. And his funny sidekick ISIS, which we'll get to in a second, and his funny computer sidekick <laughs> Beta 5. Computer beta on! Five. And that other sidekick beta five. back at the office. Yeah, Roberta. Roberta, Roberta became his sidekick uh, slash yes. kidnap victim. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. It's a little... It was an odd relationship. It's a little manson what, Well, what was odd was uh, like Spock trying to like shut her up when the cops were... The cops from the 1930s. Draft he totally put his hand on her mouth, man. Why, and, yeah, <laughs> he put his hand in, his, in her mouth. That, over that her whole, mouth. Oh, over that her whole mouth. outfit of the cops. What the fuck was that? I it know. was Keystone Cops. Yeah, yeah. It was straight yeah, up Keystone yeah, Cops. They were wearing yeah. like Keystone yeah. Cop. Yeah outfits and then they did some keystone cop shit where they got beamed up to the enterprise <laughs> and they're all like what do you say like, like, he's like g willigers or something yeah, g. i forget what he said he i don't think he, he totally said something like it, that. It, it, i don't think it was g willigers i wish i re- i should have written that down but he no. he, he he exclaimed some yeah. not even 1960s phrase it was like a 1940s uh-huh. ridiculous cop Godzooks. phrase Godzooks. yeah something along those lines no. and then and then they beam back down and he was like whoa would you look at that? It was bizarre. But that fight was funny because the first thing I thought is like, why is Spock having so much trouble? I thought, you know, Vulcans are all super strong. Right. Right. You know, so that was an that was a bit of an odd thing. Maybe they were just getting lazy towards the, <laughs> the Vulcan net yeah. pitch did not work. That didn't work on Gary Seven. And yeah. that I think has only happened a few times before. I believe he tried it on Khan. 
Yeah. In Space Seed, I think. Yeah. I think it was in Space Seed, not in Rathacon. They never meet in Rathacon. You're but right. in Space Seed, I believe he tries to do that and it doesn't work. Right. Con. Or, or it kind of sucks. almost works, but then Khan is like, ah, I'm superior. Right. Um, mm-hmm. It's like when the Jedi stuff doesn't work on some people. They're like, oh, you're trying to do that Jedi stuff on me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you got to be Jabba the Hutt. So the, <laughs> the, like I, I, earlier, I said there was no thematic message or moral. I I, I guess that's not te- technically true if you if you take into account this whole idea of the they're they're they're, like they're nuclear making nuclear war and yeah. ra- nuclear arms race sucks. But what they're saying is Orbital not particularly that interesting. And yeah, right. and, and, and again, that could be a bias from the future. Maybe at the time it was very groundbreaking for them to talk about this. Um, mm-hmm. I, I tried to look around. I didn't see anything that indicated that so much that it was a particularly unique message to say that, yeah, maybe we shouldn't all blow each other up and we're all terrified. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they were learning that, that in the was, 1950s yeah. when you yeah. started making the hydrogen bomb and you're blowing up like the bikini atoll. Mm. Because the fifties was when people were more scared. I think but, talking, yeah, that's the fifties was one. the nuclear yeah. age of yeah. being frightened as fuck. Yeah. If you hide under this desk yeah. and a nuclear weapon goes off, you'll be fine, Billy. No, you won't. You're totally be fried, <laughs> Billy. In fact, it might even be worse. You might be half alive. (laughs) Turn into one of those horrible zombie people. Into the the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I'm not trying to disparage the message of this. I totally 100% agree with the message. It wasn't wasn't as interesting as as a lot of Star Trek episodes can get to. And in fact, often the mistake, and we've we've had this critique in the past a couple of times, is, is when an episode tries to do too many things and has too many morals and messages and they mm-hmm. they don't have enough time to really fully develop any individual one that's happened a couple times in fact that was in the way to eden that i think is one yeah. of the flaws of that episode they're trying to tell yeah. too many little little moral right. tales right. and keep it simple brother yeah and some of them contradict you know it's, it just makes it up, <laughs> makes it a little bit tricky uh but yeah both, both kirk and spock have trouble with uh with roberta which is, I mean, I guess it works for the drama intention. Of it. It's one of those things that you're sort of like, uh, come on, Spock. I, I mean, right. it's not like he's not manhandling her. He's awkwardly and weirdly manhandling her. <laughs> it was it was really odd scene. And then he he like sort of Spock tosses her to like, Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> they toss her back and forth. He's, he's kind of like mm-hmm. dealing with her and he's like, I don't want to deal with her anymore. I'm going to toss right. her to Captain Kirk. Yeah. Maybe that was supposed to be a slightly sort of slapstick move. I don't know. Right. It's supposed to be comedic. But I will say, I do think it's a it's a pretty well-written episode. Uh, just, you know, I think the dialogue is interesting. I think they have a, they use a couple of clever devices, given that so much of this focus is on Gary Seven at all. And this is a whole new concept and character for the audience. They employ some good tricks. Like, I, I enjoyed that when he first gets to the Beta 5 computer, the Beta 5 computer is giving him shit about his identity. Right. And, and asking him all these questions, which was both funny from the modern perspective of dealing with like, you know, having to click the password, you know, human verification boxes mm-hmm. and all that nonsense. Um, Pick up the traffic line. But it also was, I mean, I'm saying it's clever. Maybe people don't think it's that clever, but Beta 5 basically said like, you know, please state the nature of your fucking job for proof of what you, what, who you are. And then that it allowed Gary Seven to just be sitting alone in a room revealing yeah. expository text, right? Yeah. Exposition. Yeah. He's just, it's just an, it's just a, it's a long paragraph of exposition that he's just leaning on a desk and being like, well, you see, the thing <laughs> is, this is my deal. And you don't see in Star Trek, people don't typically argue with the computer or, or this, mm-hmm. the computer doesn't have an attitude. That's kind of more like, like a Star Wars thing, maybe. Right. And he, he even says, I hate like a smart alecky. Yeah, yeah right. Mind. He's all talking back. He's like, you know, Ugh. I like other computers better than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. it's sort of almost data like almost like some yeah. people like dr pulaski interacting with data and getting like, annoyed <laughs> yeah, it is like, yeah. with that and, and this this concept is similar to what roddenberry did later which was the questor tapes which i'm not super familiar with but my understanding is is it's a similar idea in terms of i think in that case it's a robot or android um mm. sent from some aliens to help humans so it's quite, kind of like gary seven sent to help the humans there's android so he was really the fixated on that idea yeah and it evolved over yeah that particular idea and then the android idea i think questor is sort of a proto data in in mm-hmm. some ways um more, more, it was more fleshed out obviously 
in TNG, but I've got to check out some of that Questor tape stuff because I'm not super familiar with it. Anyway, you know, it's just another, you know, you, you watch these older episodes of TOS and and they have merit in their in their own right, but then just as a Star Trek fan, it's always fun to see the less obvious influences that are important later on in the series. Um, mm-hmm. Because we all know, you know, the Klingons and the Vulcans and this and that, where there's a lot of lore and all that. But this is an example, like the 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 obnoxious robot <laughs> that's being too <laughs> literal about shit and, and somebody's just not being able to deal with it. That That's something we do see later with Pulaski and Data and, and other couple examples. So that's just a fun thing. It's, it makes, it make, it, it's added value to going and watching some of these TOS episodes, even some of the ones that aren't considered that great. Now, I think this one is, is high atop many people's uh, lists even though it is a little bit awkward and weird, or perhaps because it's a little bit awkward and weird. And we haven't even talked about the whole Isis the Cat thing yet. We've talked about Spock's goofy hat, but not Isis the Cat. Yeah, well, he had two goofy hats. Two yeah. goofy hats. Right. So we could put, we could do another Dan thing here, which is we could have yeah. the uh, we could we could we could rank the top ten cute cat moments. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with number five for some reason. So I will say number five is uh, when uh, Spock is petting the cat. <laughs> <laughs> what about when the cat, uh, when like Gary is out on the, on he's, the up, gantry? He's, up, yeah, he's up on the rocket and, and the cat just kind of crawls oh, yeah, the, from out of nowhere. See, that's number one. <laughs> yeah, that would be number yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was cute. It was all like on top of him. Like, oh, I love you. Every cat owner or, or person who's had extensive uh, experience with a cat understands lying down and having a cat walk in your back while you're trying to sabotage a <laughs> sabotage a nuclear warhead. Yeah. I mean everyone's dealt with that at one point or another. I guess I, they used three different cats. Yeah, there were a few three different cats all playing different ISIS. Cats. They all had the same collar on. Mm-hmm. Uh there are a couple other things with the cat I I there were some shots in this episode that I was just very impressed with like when Gary 7 is escaping from Kirk and Spock because as we just said, they were manhandling. They were in the middle of manhandling Roberta and Gary seven seemed to have been perfectly happy. It's like, I'm out of here. He's like, this is great. I can take my time Thanks to <laughs> dialing this. in where I need to be <laughs> on this. To this machine. Broad, I can escape. And he's like listening out. He's like, he's like, is, is, is she still being uh, accosted by those strange men? Yes, she is. Okay, yeah, good. Let me, well. let me push Let's some more buttons. Going. But when, when he, when he, when he, you know, he transports to the uh, Air Force base and the doors open up and he's just standing there like with his cat. I thought that was like a really cool shot and, and how he walks out all sort of smoothly. And then some mm-hmm. people start walking around. And he's just like, Oh, Hey. And he walks over to, it looks like a taco cart or something. Yeah. I don't know if it was an ice cream cart or something like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just walking around with a cat. And then he, he encounters a, 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 another Keystone cop. Yeah. Um, although this time that, that he's a security guard. He's like, well, he military put your, security put your guard. cat down. Yeah, a guy walks up, a sexy tall man with a, with a cat walks up, and the guy's all like, like Mister, all, put your cat down. All you gotta do is put the cat down. <laughs> Just put the cat down. And he, I guess he showed him one of his IDs. Yeah. I guess yeah, the CIA yeah. National Security. Yes, maybe it was the NSA one. Yeah. yeah, it was the NSA one. Yeah, that was a different one. And then he and then he did that ray gun thing that makes the guys yeah, have he did orgasms. The servo. Yeah, <laughs> it makes people have orgasms. <laughs> right, right. That's right. That, that's what it does, that right? Dude, that dude's face was so overacting. All those dudes, when whenever he left like, the room, those dudes all had smiles on their face and pie pie eyed expressions. Pie. Right, pie eyed. Pie eyed. That's pie-eyed. an expression. So again, they they talk about uh, uh, Terry Gar's character Ro- Roberta. You know, she has a high intelligence. Um, they don't do a lot to try to demonstrate that. She seems to have a certain amount of gumption and bravery mm-hmm. which maybe in the 1960s that meant intelligence it meant like you're smart if you just right. if you have gumption she's plucky yeah if you, you're, yes. you're plucky she's definitely plucky whatever whatever the appropriate terms are there was some you know this wasn't more of a whimsical than a comedic episode but they did have some good comedic moments Mm-hmm. Um, because again, I didn't find the guys passing out with big smiles on their face uh, <laughs> uh, comedic. It was whimsical, but it was not necessarily comedic. Um, and a lot of the cat stuff, it wasn't laugh out loud funny. It was like, what a what an yeah. awkward situation. There's a cat on a gantry upon a man's back. A cat on a gantry. A cat on a well, gantry. When ISIS like attacks the security guy. Yeah, ISIS attacks. Wow. Wow. And then and he's all like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh and but there was that overt i did laugh 
at the joke where when Gary Seven, right right when he's first encountering uh, Roberta, Gary Seven uh, says, uh, where's 347? And she's like, shrugs her shoulders. And she's like, next to 348? Yeah. yeah no, that, that's a and then he's like, he's like, you don't need to respond in code. Yeah. 201 I mean, or something. It's, it's a, that's a dumb joke, <laughs> but I laughed out fucking loud. I really uh, did. Yeah, no, that's good. And she's, a lot of it's her delivery. She's a, yeah. Terry Gar is she's brilliant. She's got comic chops she does have yeah, comic does. chops that's what she was known for i believe so. uh, mm-hmm. yeah well gary seven is trying to confirm her identity and the computer beta <laughs> five starts reading out stuff and she doesn't mind that it says her age she's 20 years old age 20 uh weight 120 pounds <laughs> it's like i don't know why these aliens aren't using metric yeah. Maybe they're just you know this is very U.S. Everybody they're, they're knows aliens use metric. They're, they're, this is a very U.S. centric episode, as is mm-hmm. unfortunately usual in Star Trek, which we also talked about last week a little bit. But can, when it gets to her star shaped mole, it's like she oh, has yeah, a right. one mole on the back of her neck, and then a star shaped mole on, and she's like, "Oh wait, like, wait, 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 wait a minute, oh, that's man. too much information." Which was funny, but then it made me think of sexy things. And it was a trick. Mm. It's like the way they trick you. Where was that mole? Where was the mole? Where is it over there? Why was she embarrassed? Was she she embarrassed because it's under her hairline? Like on her head? No. No. Is it on her knee? No. Could she have a star-shaped mole on her foot and it just embarrasses the hell out of her? Maybe. <laughs> what well, we uh, we know what we, we we know what we're all thinking out there where the star shaped mole is. I right? know what I'm. We we might not all think the same thing, but we're thinking this. We're thinking that there's, thinking a, there's one, a, one of two places. It's a like small it. in a, in <laughs> mathematical terms. You have a or set of three. numbers. I think this is a fifty fifty. Chance. This is a constrained <laughs> set of numbers. There's a very small set of uh, of of data points here that uh, that could be considered. So, which I I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm supposed to think that's too risque for 1968 or not. I mean, probably like apparently and not. Apparently not. Not, not Star- for I don't yeah. think so. Star Trek did some crazy crazy shit with women wearing not enough clothes and stuff stuff like right. that. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Um. And and we do see that finally. I think you know we can we can approach this Isis, Isis topic. Right. We talked about her cat mm-hmm. cuteness, right? On Dan's, Dan's top 10. It wasn't Dan, but in honor of Dan, Dan's top 10 cute cat Dan, moments, which Dan. we provided three. So this would not count as one of the cute cat moments. Well, I don't know. Maybe it would. That maybe would be a number debate. Three or something. Number we could, three. We could argue about it, but the, the, the fact that this, this, this cat inexplicably turns into a sexy woman, with her boobs covered in a bib. Yeah. yeah right. That for like weird. 10 seconds. And by the way, this gets weirder than you all might think from the on-screen stuff. Really weird. So this wild. this woman just, this cat turns into a woman briefly. Terry Gar is all like, "Hey. Hey, who is that?" And then Gary Seven all sexily and and sounding exactly like Leonard Nimoy that's, for some reason uh, is all like, is you, you, "You'll find that's just my cat." Yeah, and, and then it's a cat again. It it's cat. like another thing they're trying to set up for the show. The show's going to have some yeah. weird dynamic between Terry mm-hmm. Gar and the right. cat woman. And, and he's like, she only sees her as a, as a, you know, she's the only one that sees her when she's in women form or some kind of crazy hijinks. Like, right. Maybe like the, she's like, like, I'm like the just dead frog. Reveal myself to you. It's like the dead frog, the WD frog that like, you know, when <laughs> you know, the, you know, Porky Pig sees him, mm-hmm. he dances. Oh, man. But like when, <laughs> when he shows it to anybody else, it's just like a rotting dead yeah. frog carcass. <laughs> I, don't, I think it's but a it's frog. Always singing. <laughs> no, it's a dead frog. <laughs> I mean, it's not a dead frog because it's fucking with him. It's trolling. It's trolling Porky Pig or whoever. I know it's... It's, you've, they've, they've it's not Porky version. Pig. It's, uh, it's, it's like... It's like, like Human Son? guy. It's, it's like a human a, guy. It's like a construction worker guy. Uh, well, there's the little guy. There's the in on Tiny Toons. I think they did the same thing with uh, uh, with the Porky Pig's uh, nephew or whoever that yeah, was. Yeah, something like that. They never had. An, was the uh, it, it was never the children of the main characters. It was always like the niece or nephew because they didn't want to imply that the main characters have any sort of sexual sexual lives. Yeah, I mean Porky the Pig. Come on, I don't think he. Right. right? Come on. I, don't I, think, know, I man. think he was on the other team, man. I well, I don't care which team he was on. I think uh, I think what, what whatever his sexual preference is, he was the Ben Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> of those uh, of, of the fucking a, Looney Tunes, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, he was traveling to France and having a, a good old time doing all sorts of uh, foreign policy, if you know Hell what yeah. I mean. But uh, the, have, the, 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 that's all, folks. We have mildly diverged from the from the topic, oh. but <laughs> wildly, wildly diverged. mildly and wildly. But the, so the the ISIS thing. So the, the again, this makes more sense when you understand that this was supposed to be a different show and or lead into a spinoff 
uh, be its own thing. So obviously they're trying to introduce this character dynamic, but <laughs> they don't really set it up ahead of time other than the cat responds very well. There's something special about this cat. So, okay, I'll give it to you. But I, I think maybe it would have been fun if they, if Gary seven had made use of ISIS's human form a couple times, or if we learned whether Hi- ISIS was, uh, a human that could turn into a cat or if it was mm-hmm. a, a, a shapeshifter of some sort, was it a founder? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, retroactively mm-hmm. we can say that. Mm-hmm. So, so we don't know the deal. It's only for two seconds. And apparently the only joke about it is that Terry Gar is momentarily flustered. Right. I well, guess it seemed like she was jealous and it wasn't. Yeah. That's the other thing is, is she, was she being jealous? She was like, or was it she, seemed like she was jealous every like, time. I want to change into like, this guy's cat. <laughs> He's like, I want to, I want, I want to be this guy's uh, petting. You know, I want yeah, him to scratch right. my butt. I want to turn into a right. cat. And I want to have a tail. I want to have a tail and have him scratch my butt near my tail, not the and butt. That's butt, the phrase you know, we're the, born. The top. Anyway, you all this know what cat tail ends where most cat tails <laughs> begin. So that's bizarre <laughs> enough. What makes us even even more bizarre in my book is that uh, when I was looking up, I was like, all right, who's the actress who played this? Well. um, Oh, I yeah, wasn't able to get a there. yeah. I was I wasn't able to get a clear answer because apparently nobody knew who this person oh, was. That's right, yeah. And then oh, yeah. they assumed it was this one actress. For, it, they for, assumed it was an years. old Playboy playmate. Yeah, yeah but she then, was like, no, it wasn't me. And, but, it wasn't her. It was, but yeah, but for they years they thought it was, and then finally she was like, no, nah, that wasn't me. I don't Until know what they're talking about. Two years ago, they figured out who it was. Okay, it was. Right. I, I knew it was recently. Uh, who they figured out. I, I don't have the name down of I'm who gonna actually get it. April I'm gonna, I'm gonna Tantro get it. or something like that. A- April Tantro. I'm getting it. So I, I know it's like, okay, I guess she didn't get a credit in oh, there or something. Tetro. April Tetro. A- April Tetro. T-A-T-R-O. There, I'm pulling the Dan looking up real quick. Yeah. Uh, another Danism. Yeah. Looking stuff up to get accurate a- information as opposed to just yeah. relying on our increasingly faulty memories. <laughs> Uh, people used to think it was somebody named Victoria Vetri. Yes, she was a Playboy playmate. Yeah, okay. yeah, Victoria Vetri. And she also went to jail because she killed a person. Oh, for real? Really? Like in real yeah, life? Dude, she was all involved with like the Phil Spector stuff. And... Oh. You mean like later on? Yeah, dude. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Her, I was, her, I, when you said you... that, I immediately thought it was like 1972. And she no, like no, no. When you somebody. look at like her history, it like goes into the eighties or the nineties, and she gets uh, involved. In some she sh- allegedly shot her husband. Yes, the, so there that was go. an attempted murder, and then there was mm-hmm. some uh, another. She, she went, had another charge mm-hmm. later on, or something. Yeah, that's really interesting. I didn't know anything about that. But she wasn't <laughs> on Star Trek. <laughs> no, she was never on Star Trek. She never on, on Star really Trek. She was on Rosemary's movie. Baby. Whoever whoever it ends up this person was um, a, a lovely woman, but it was it was April, again April it, Tetro. it was just odd, <laughs> and I, I guess it was to throw in a you know like ah women get jealous immediately, and, and even uh, when they're yeah, not right. in a romantic relationship with the person, it's like I mean Gary Seven is a very attractive man, but he's also kind yeah, of exactly. he, the people. relationship starts out with him basically kidnapping her, and, mm-hmm. and but know, he's like super old compared to Terry Gar. Well, that right? too. I mean, she's. Probably close to twenty in this. I mean, yeah, I don't know. He's probably, game, he's probably like fifty or something. Or a hundred. Although you never know. Uh, you know, the, the, because of like uh, all of us Was grew it up six thousand years ago, and then they groomed the other agents and yeah, he, oh, yeah. They, to talk about generations of stuff or whatever. Yeah, but then yeah, on the yeah. other hand, he, he considered himself like a twentieth century man in, in a way. Right. There's a little bit of inconsistency there. There but was some yeah. weird stuff in there. The other thing to remember is is that we are all from generations who have grown up with like the BPA plastic and all that stuff. So. Uh, Back in the day, back in the 60s, like a 30 year old dude looked like this. They were all like uh, masculine and chiseled. Um, right. Yeah, they were pumping them up full of the, whatever the hormones they give the cows or something. I don't know. Right. Um, but then they all died young. This guy. Uh, yes, they, yes, they did. Robert Lansing died at like 66. They were eating or a bunch of steaks all no, the right. time. Yeah. Smoking well, packs yeah, and packs that of was cigarettes. Probably pretty, that was good for those old timey kind of. Whatever, he's probably lived a hard life, man. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. I'm pretty sure actors, they did. Actors, actors burn totally. the wick at both yeah. ends, man. Yeah. It is actors acting. burn that wick, bro. Well, so there's a couple other <laughs> kind of funny things in this episode. I know exactly, I know why they used the Apollo 4 footage. This is uh, before the moon landing. They didn't have any other footage. Right? So this is, this is. Right? they not only did not have any other, well, they didn't have any other footage of Apollo. Of Apollo they could, they could yeah. have done some Mercury stuff, Apollo, right? Yeah. Um, but they, they, they chose the Apollo because of course it's what's most recent been, and known yeah, and in the news. Contemporary. People were excited. Some people were excited for the moon landing. Not as many people as, as we're led to believe. Um, 
We're as excited until it happened, but that's a whole nother story and a whole nother podcast. Uh, probably put out by the BBC. It's got Apollo. Yeah, they did do that one. Um, that was a good one. It's, Apollo. Uh, it's got it's satin like, five. It's like a, a 12 minutes to whatever, 12 minutes to Eagle Crater. Natalie listened to that. Yeah. yeah. So the, um, the problem though is, is that it seems ridiculous to, to use like a, what appears to be a full stack Apollo to launch a, like a nuclear warhead into low earth orbit. Right. I never understood yeah. that. Whole thing. This is, it, that shit's for going to the a, moon. It's a man. moon rocket. That's for putting a bomb on the fucking moon. It's a moon rocket. <laughs> right, it's got dude. some Delta, cool. Delta V, man. Put your gun platform on That's the moon. It's just filled with Delta V. <laughs> Squirting Delta V out the back. Delta V is coming out of its like ass. I wouldn't believe enough Delta V to get to the moon and beyond. But, okay. So they used it to, <laughs> to, to launch, uh, you know, one Merv. They should have uh, used a Mercury. <laughs> yeah, I know. It really would have made more sense. To, yeah, anyway, I know that's, that's, that's what we call a nerd critique. It's not, a, it's not an important critique. Um, oh, except for when he is in, on the gantry, when Gary Seven's on the gantry and fiddling around with those wires, it did not look like those wires were going to survive like the, the jostling around at launch. Yeah. It, 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 those wires didn't look like they would survive the, the jostling around while I'm eating lunch. Maybe it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just like loosely pegged into a little, you know, ginger gingerbread board. Bread, yeah, uh, bread board. yeah, that was. The breadboard? Yeah, the breadboard was just like beep. Put some wires. It was like there. a it was like a cheap stereo or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, just get one of those kits. The people at home won't know. They don't know what's inside a fucking rocket. Just, right. put, just stick stick some wires loosely in there. The have, rocket. Have him have him be able to just access it and just Nobody be all like, oh, I'm going. just gonna loosely I'm just gonna loosely wiggle these rocket wires. Meow. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that the Apollo thing was uh, a little bit overpowered. Totally, but you get to see that thing launch up into the. It was like blasting off into space yeah. and shit. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. But uh, like, but we've seen that. I mean, we've been looking at like footage of like an Apollo rocket. I mean, like, that's like by it. You know, that was probably that was definitely new footage at the time. But for us, like we've been seeing but that for us, it's whole old, lives. Man. It's just that's we've just been stock, seeing it since we're kids. Stock fucking you know stuff. Plus, yeah. we got M- to see MTV and shit. We got to see even better right. stuff. We right. saw right. MTV. Oh, that, that, that yeah. Apollo have, thirteen. I don't, I don't know if that was that may have been the one that went to the moon for MTV because they had that whole moon thing. Going. Yeah, right. Well, they but it was still an Apollo, and it looked looked a lot like it that. would have been the same. Yeah, it was the same rocket, same basically style same. of launch, same paint color scheme. You know, because NASA stuck to <laughs> yeah, they stuck to what they liked. Um, what do you think about the line at the end where, where they're talking about like, well, Spock is like, well, we've looked at our databases for this time, and it turns out this is exactly uh, what, what the fuck was supposed to happen. It was it was a bit confusing. Why you could could it they was, have done that before? Out. They didn't do that before, they and did, then they didn't know that when they when they traveled back to 1968 to observe shit, right? Or did right. they did they know that? And they just they just didn't tell us because. You know. uh, I don't know, but it it was all to set up the line that it was like, yeah, well, right. we can't tell you what's going to happen, but we can tell you that yeah. you all are going to have some uh, interesting a, experiences ahead a, of you. A hell of a time on your new show you're going to get. You're going to do 36 episodes a year <laughs> for 10 years. Everybody's going to love it. You're Everyone's going to get a, $100 a week and you're going to love it. That's a, that's good steady work for an actor. <laughs> 1968. Gonna be a big star, Gary Seven. It's gonna be the biggest star in the world. You're gonna live forever. You're gonna live way past 66 because you will have gotten this cherry gig. But uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it didn't work out. Gonna, and when you think about it, you're gonna I, be somebody. I understand why Roddenberry. He, Roddenberry somebody. was producing this show. He had the opportunity to change the script. Totally, that's fine. I, I I understand why he put this this episode in there in a in a in a in a an attempt a hail mary attempt to try to gain some traction for this idea. However, when you consider that the problem with his show was that it was going to get canceled because nobody's watching it, putting right. it putting it on the last episode of the of presumably the last season of this show that's getting canceled because not enough people watch it may not be the best way to get a bunch of eyeballs and a bunch of mm-hmm. uh, support for this show from your fan base. Because right. as it turned out, the fans were willing to come out and do a, a letter writing campaign yeah. and and get a third season, a, a slightly wacky and bizarre third season. But a third season, nevertheless. It, it seems like that if you're if you're if you're doing Star Trek and it's not working, you you don't write a show that's going to be even weirder than Star Trek. Yeah, you you, you write you go back to doing westerns and military shows. And then and then doing. and then he's he, doing he has some kind of military. Then show. you premiere it on Star Trek, which nobody's watching, and it's the last episode. Exactly, it's like yeah. in the summer. I mean, it's not the summer; it's March. Uh, but, March. But um, 
Which is weird, by March. the way. Why did the season end in March? Yeah. 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 Got anyway. came. Well, no, because I mean, they 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 did around this number of episodes. That's, this is about the true, this yeah. is the appropriate amount for a for a, anyway. Well, yeah, with the with the letter writing campaign, Star Trek was able to get that. But I guess in his mind, <laughs> he was just like, "Oh, the studio executives are going to see this, <laughs> and they're going to be like, Jesus Christ, look at that Roberta, <laughs> look at that show, look at that Roberta, look at how she uh, gets confused by the typewriter because it's automatically typing because they invented voice transcription <laughs> right. decades what before am I supposed to do? Type before it worked with my well." Nose? I know, right? And the funny part is, is that on the, uh, my first reaction to that was like, "Oh, that's so funny because it's voice transcription, and that's so common now." And then the other, the next thought was like, "Yeah, but you know, it still doesn't a hundred percent work. <laughs> like, it's gotten better, but it's still, it's still, you're still correcting some pretty ridiculous bullshit here yeah. and there." Especially if you're trying to transcribe something for you're sending a text, and uh, right. it doesn't do it if you're sending a text to one of your uh, your, your your body buddies mm. that you text your with. Buddies. Your body buddies, it's fine for the most part, but when you're sending a text to your mom or your boss, <laughs> your boss, yes. that's when it like cor- changes the words inexplicably, inexplicably to vulgar, to expli- inex- inexplicitly, or, or or some other horrible horrible thing. So you can send in your examples of horrible mistakes you've made with vocal transcription, also known as voice transcription. Uh, I've murdered to your family. Feedback at it's got Star Trek dot com. That's funny because it's Jimmy says that you know, it, it, it could be a valid threat because I'm not current. You know, I, I don't see my family at the moment. He could have done it remotely. This he does be, know where they live. He does know where, do where they know live. Where you live. He knows their weaknesses. This could be a. T- he the, knows their strength. Really, really good plot, except it's done in real life, so it's all horrifying. But mm-hmm. uh, anyway, he's miles away, but you never know, man. He's, yeah. I could just beam. He's I could be a, transported. He's a wily one. into the Enterprise, and then <laughs> yeah. you know, go to 1968. The swankiest fucking apartment. You should go to that like side. Yeah, tight. yeah. No, that apartment. The whole and, and the like, whole thing was. The apartment was swanky. It was. It was. You know, top of the line. I mean, come on, the east side. Mm-hmm. Even in '68. Cha ching, cha ching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what and it that, had. That it had that fucking vault, man. I love the yeah, vault. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a, the 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 vault uh, with the with this with. The, I don't know Circle what you call computer. it. Computer. Yeah, well, it's got the yeah. computer in there, and then there's the transporty part, right? Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if they if they name they didn't really name that. I mean, Kirk refers to it like you know a transporter thing, so maybe yeah. it's we can just assume it's equivalent. But it seems to be. But cooler. it's like a portal. It's more portal. Yeah, it's portal because it, yeah, it's, it's always there, and, and it's, it's all like cool it looks like a blue caveiness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. so like, um. All right. Well. Uh. Any odds and ends? I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Because yes, we've, totally. we've uh, gone through the bulky, the main parts of the episode. I like Roberta Lincoln. She goes. I'm gonna quote her. I know this world needs help. That's why some of my generation yeah. are kind of crazy yeah, and rebel. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you know? Right, you wonder yeah. if we're gonna be alive when we're. 30 yeah, some, yeah. some of you <laughs> i i i some of you. Re- that re- that line resonated with me most of you I, I enjoyed it but it was it was totally like i was like fucking suit yeah, yeah. Still hanging exactly. it was it was it, i think I, it, I, it's I, more new because people think of you know th- these are these are people trying to make money produce tv shows right that's that's always yeah. true but it, they aren't complete shitheads but they're they're not quite fully understanding, I think, what's going on right, in the right. real world. So they've g- developed this sort of poetic understanding of what's going on. And um, I don't know, you know, don't we trust we, anyone under thirty out there, kids. We we we, we lack some um, we lack some contextual information, you know, and, and all that about the about the time period. But I'd be very curious to be a young audience member. And how they would interpret that, whether they would feel sort of like it, yeah, was, it was like the height of Vietnam and all the civil. Yeah, like, totally. Well, yeah. And, and especially at this stage in Star Trek, violence. Yeah, because Star Trek did a bunch of really on the nose metaphors, and this mm-hmm. is again we discussed previously mm-hmm. that this is less so. It's a little bit more. I mean, it is on the nose in some ways, but I guess it's just sort of straightforward as yeah. opposed to some of the other ones, which it's not that some of the other metaphors that, that, that Star Trek has done aren't, aren't problematic in some ways. Uh, like the, um, uh, well, we, we don't need to go into the details, but there's, there's a bunch of other episodes where they do stuff and uh, they're progressive messages, but it doesn't mean, <laughs> doesn't mean they were like perfect necessarily. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
here it's a it's a little similar where it's it's sort of it's it's through a prism it's still through a prism of a male dominated a, a white dominated even if they're trying to talk about things like racism and stuff occasionally mm-hmm. here it's still an episode everybody's where a, still wearing suits man. everyone in this yeah. episode is, is white people like Raising pretty much everyone Not, and ties, I, like you, you know you do see a few brief you know with but but the but really get, right everybody's on on the street. Street. It's, it's white people Mm-hmm. Yeah, Which and is you fine. Little, That's, and you get a little bit of the ship. You get Uhura. Yeah. Hey, okay. for a few seconds, a you get bit. Sulu for a few seconds. You get uh, what's his boner for a few seconds. I, 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 and I wonder because <laughs> father. because look, 1960s <laughs> Star Trek was not as we just said. It's not perfect. No, I get but it. more often than not, in previous it's episodes, so awesome. they they made an effort with uh, all sorts of characters, uh, supporting characters, and even uh, guest star characters to have people of color, uh, people from different backgrounds, um, mm-hmm. sprinkled in, in among the crew. And the, like I Clint said, Howard. Guy, Glass star, we, <laughs> Clint Howard. Clint Howard. Well, he um, pops up a couple of times. He's in Star yeah, Trek a lot. In Discovery. He was in Discovery. He, yeah. And just, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, in Disco- yeah. 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 That's what it was. It was Discovery. He's like some kind of space drugs dealer. <laughs> yeah. He gets Tilly all high. It's funny. Kanye. The this episode to me almost stood out in terms of how little uh, minority representation there was, and I'm wondering if that is itself a function of this being a pilot episode for a new TV show, yeah. where yeah, it 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 is mostly taking place in the '60s. The the one alien character or out of this world character, maybe not alien, is Gary Seven, right. uh, and his his genderless, semi-genderless, raceless computer. Right. Um, so maybe, well, I don't know. I'm he just... tried the, in Star Trek, mm-hmm. he tried to put a bunch of minorities in space and not a bunch, but there yeah. were a, a handful more than anybody else. And, Nobody bought it. Uh, maybe he was going for something a little bit more mainstream. Yeah, he, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But which uh, again, you could argue, well, that's how you're going to fail because you know, don't don't try, don't yeah, overly uh, try to please uh, the mainstream because that's not how you come up with something new and groundbreaking, you know. But uh, you know, not I'm not here. You to have to keep, trick white people. Yeah, you, you do. Have, you do have to trick white you people. We can trick we can speak from experience. <laughs> we take we we as a people do take a lot of uh, you get a really bamboozle us. Yeah. We're not that hard to bamboozle. That's not the good side you, you bamboozle white people we need bamboozling <laughs> um star trek was good at that and still remains good at that by the way it's still pretty good at that uh, but yeah i think there's there's a possibility that this was a, a whitewashed somewhat uh, in order to make it more palatable to audiences in, in again gene roddenberry's quest to continue being a hollywood producer which is perfectly reasonable given that was his job and it's um he was he was dealing with the environment he was dealing is, with yeah mm-hmm one of those guys uh any other odds and ends jesse any any thoughts um not really i think we covered a lot i don't have any real odds yeah although i I guess the one thing i would say is it was another peculiar thing in this episode is like we have scotty has this reputation uh both in the in in the timeline of tos and in the in the future of star trek and among the fandom of uh, among his uh, many amazing skills, he is uh, particularly adept at using the transporter. They uh, they even use this in that TNG episode, you know, mm-hmm. when they with the relics, you That's know, when right. they get them. Um, right. He knows how to use a transporter. Hell yeah, Yet this yeah. motherfucker accidentally transports up these two cops, these yeah. two Keystone cops we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that was fine. How, I know they you, were you, running. You're close. not supposed to get extra people. I don't know. How do they get, that's always like they always tell you. Two to beam the fuck up. And he was looking all right. sheepish. He was all like, ooh, <laughs> oh shit. Oops. And then Kurt, you know, they're all like, oh, beam him, fuck the, beam him the fuck back down. That is a prime directive violation in the first magnitude. Right. Oh, well, he, he like tracks uh, <laughs> seven twice. Yeah. With the yeah he's, he knows what he's doing. Exactly. He's supposed yeah. to. So why is he beaming up Keystone Cops? <laughs> I don't know. It was just it's funny. The, yeah. That was the comic. Genius. Comic genius. Yeah. Well, mm. let's, maybe we'll, we'll withhold genius, but regardless this is a fan it's a fun episode it's fantastic i think part of it, the reason is fun is because it is a bit weird and odd but mm-hmm. also uh, terry gar is great robert lansing's great uh the the three cats that played isis are great uh the the, the woman who played uh the isis as in human form for about two seconds uh is great um so it's a it's a it's a fun episode definitely this is worth one of watching. those i think this is one of those violate time violations that kirk uh, committed 
according to the, uh, yes. the time cops in DS9. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and, yeah. and he committed it completely casually. The one yeah. time in Star Trek that, that time travel is just like, yeah, oh, yeah, we've got to. We just kind of yeah, We have gone go back in time. Do some time travel. Research. Why? Do you have to save the universe? Oh, no, no, no. We just no. wanted to find we're some just, stuff out. We're mildly confused about why humans are still alive. Did anybody tell them to do that? Or they were just like, we got nothing <laughs> it's else It's so to funny do. when yeah. it's. Uh, the, 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 we have gone back. The premise, the premise is so, so hilarious. ridiculous when you think so about it. Non- when you're like, we don't understand why we're still alive, so let's <laughs> right. go fucking monkey about in the past to, uh, to see why. Two, let's be years. careful not to fuck anything up because we might disappear it's, a la Marty McFly. Historical research. 300 years. 300? Three, three, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're in the twenty three. Twenty three, yeah. 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 So, but anyway, so and it's funny because <laughs> there's a previous episode. Uh, I forget if it's season two or season one, but it's tomorrow is yesterday, where they also go back in time, but they go back in time to like 1969, I think. <laughs> right. So this is 1968 which is like the contemporary NES time, but the previous one, they went back to like the slight future. Like two years of the future or something. Right. Oh Man, yeah. It's temporal got, mechanics always gives me a headache. Yeah. All right. So th- I think that will do it for us this lovely evening. 1.21 gigawatts. Yes. One, we, we, oh. we, we wish you all 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.21 gigawatts. It's actually pronounced gigawatts. Yeah, I know. I would call it gigawatts too. I was got slightly annoyed at Doc Brown for saying it. Cause it's like, that's on, not Doc real Brown. engineering. It's Doc like Brown. saying GIF instead of GIF. And I'm sorry, people out there. I know our audience is divided on this. It's GIF. <laughs> graphics interge- graphics human. interchange format. I don't care what yep. the guy who invented it says. That's irrelevant. That's like saying like the guy who pr- invented the word asshole says it's actually pronounced asshole. Uh, no, I don't care. I mean, I kind of well, think that's look, cool. Remember, McCoy said Seven's a human. Yeah, well, he's definitely human as far as we understand. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if we if we take it all for face value, but uh, <laughs> um, nevertheless, he's you know, just not exactly earthly. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. So, but in the meantime, you can reach out to us via the email at feedback at itscoststartrek dot com, which we provided previously not too long ago but we always do it here at the end instagram uh, you can get us on instagram if you like if you're into that if you're looking at pretty pictures uh the instagram is at it's got star trek uh which is also very similar it's to got our, pretty pictures our, our twitter feed and and uh, Ooh, we have twitter. a we have a good old time on twitter do that twitter uh, do the instagram everyone does the, we love the twitter and that's also do at it. it's got star trek that's easy <laughs> enough to do find it. It's now, if you're one of them website people, and uh, we know you're out there, I'm a fan. I admit to it. I'm not. I'm. I'm not closeted in that regard. If you're a website person, you can go to our website at www. dot it's got star trek. dot com, and uh, there's all sorts of fun stuff to do there, uh, like listen to the show or yeah. organize by series. Because, you know, sometimes you're just in the mood to hear some people jabber on about TNG. You can search by uh, yeah. the, the series and which ep- you can see which episodes we've done for each yeah. series. You can, like, click on Discovery, or you can click on Lower Decks, or you can, like... Uh, you can be like, why did they pick those we, we, episodes? We've covered some... Yeah, you can think of that. You can write us angry emails about shit. Do whatever you want to do. The animated series. But that's, for the, that's the website. You can also get us on Facebook. Facebook. People seem to be hanging out on Facebook a lot, so there you go. And of course, YouTube, because there there is a subset of the podcast listening audience that enjoys listening to podcasts on YouTube. Hell yeah! I've done it occasionally myself. Uh, I've felt done very, that through the YouTube. Yeah, it felt very that. it felt very transgressive. So it's I like think, watching a, watching some music. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. I'm, I think I'm uh, you know I, I get the transgressive vibe of it. You know, if you just uh, you're not about having headphones in, listening on your phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I do it on my laptop so I can hear my, my or if friends. You, or if you, or, or if your podcast player doesn't have the ability to cast to a to a media device, then uh, you can yes. load up the YouTube and to get that and listen, to the, listen to the podcast YouTube style while watching a static graphic image with our logo on it. <laughs> you, what what we'll do is is we'll, we'll we'll you follow us on social media and then we'll be able to then follow post you. post onto the social media. And then uh, tell you what we're going to be talking about next week. We'll follow you. And then you can watch it, and then you can listen to the episode next week. And that's kind of how this whole thing works. And then we'll watch you. Right? Yeah. Watch you through the computer. 
<laughs> then we'll follow you and watch. Oh, and you can also like and subscribe. Like you it. can leave a review. Apple Podcast. You can do all those things. You can do Apple Hell Podcasts. Yeah. Apple Podcast. And Apple iTunes. Podcast. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and you can, you, can, you can go on Stitcher. You know, you tell all your Stitcher. friends. That we're available everywhere. And and Friends, religious congregation, if you happen to have a religious congregation, we, we welcome yeah. all. Yeah, there you go. We welcome your, everyone uh, here. Your, your rotary or your... Rotary your, club. Your lodge. The, yeah. The, your the, elk lodge. The, the, the elk lodge, lodge or the moose lodge. Or the masons. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got your local pipe fitters union, definitely welcome then. Those pipe are the people fitters. you want on your side. Pipe fitters joint, are... Joint fitters. You, you want... Pipe fitters on your side in any sort of yeah. uh, social because they social come, after, situation. come after you with pipes and <laughs> beat you. Mm-hmm. That's why you want them on your side, <laughs> yeah. and they can go after Medieval. go after your enemies yes. with pipes. Yes. So uh, join your local pipe fitters union, uh, and if you aren't a pipe fitter, just toss them some cash. Uh, or, protection fee. They, they, <laughs> kick, pre- they can kick A's. Yeah, they can kick A's. <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, that will that will that will certainly do it for us this evening. Uh, thank you, Jimmy, for joining us again. Uh, thank and you. Uh, uh, we look forward to uh, you know talking at the audience uh, next week on a topic that they'll figure out by following us on social media. So in the meantime, have a lovely evening, and we will talk to you later. Bye bye. <laughs> Would you mind telling me who that is? That, Miss Lincoln, is simply my cat. Your cat? Mm.